welcome to my channel Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang. And I'm Wolfgang. So, in the following guided meditation, we will find out about some of the root causes of your addictive behavior and have your high self rate them from 1 to 10. And then we will focus on transmuting and clearing these root causes as much as possible with a shotgun type meditation. It will be a subjective experience, but it may give you a new perspective of the hidden forces that are limiting you. And as you know, knowledge is power. Then most likely you will feel a lot lighter after the meditation. And um, please let me know if you find a more detailed, effective and deeper guided meditation on YouTube on this topic. And also please support this noble cause of uplifting humanity and give me a thumbs up and share this information in your circle of influence. That will be good karma, right? So, what are the commonly known reasons for addictive behavior? Yeah, and um, then there is also the fahrt side <laughs> that is based on my personal lifelong experience with clients. Um, but according to Google, the top causes for substance use disorder are, first of all, a family history of addiction. And of course now, I mean, parental imprinting can greatly affect a person's likelihood of intoxication and addiction. I mean, you do as daddy did. Right. And sleep problems. Wow. So, <laughs> if you have sleep problems, uh, listen to my guided meditation or podcast, and you will probably, you know, fall asleep fast, or at least have a good time. So it's a win-win. Mm. A few of my uh, clients, you know, had been haunted by ghosts. You know, they were just waiting for them to close their eyes. And um, this can also be a, a cause for that. So I have several free guided meditations, you know, on ghosts on YouTube. Um, just uh, do, you know, uh, a search. But it's complicated, so you might need my help. And then, you know, another um, reason for addiction is chronic pain. And from my personal knowledge, you know, about one third of adults have chronic back pain. This means back pain all the time. And if you are one of those, I have a special video for you. Um, just search my library for back pain. But in general, pain is a cry for help by your body. And I advise that you dedicate, I mean, 20 minutes a day to research everything you can find out about your condition, especially the complementary healing arts like chi manipulation, massage, pressure points, meridians, gems, herbs, essential oils, minerals, and vitamin deficiency. You know, the body-mind connection a la Louisa Hayes. So, and, you know, that's very important. You know, you got to take responsibility, you know, for <laughs> your health. And also, now I'm more on the far outside, in my opinion, a lot of physical pain, you know, comes from past life trauma, like accidents, curses, implants, portals, and, and much more. Um, this even applies to animals, as I'm finding out from my work with a house trainer. I mean, you know, I mean, with animals, uh, they have, like, karma, they get cursed, uh, they have ghosts, they have ghosts following them around, just they have a high self, just like humans. They're also very intelligent when you talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> so, knowledge is power, and it will open up a world for you uh, that you knew never existed. Another of the main reasons I quoted is financial difficulty. Of course, you know, I mean, many years ago, I read about an experiment, you know, where they gave heroin to 10 people and only two liked it. And uh, nobody knew what they were getting, of course. And when 
they analyzed the personality profile they found the tattoo that liked it had a lot of problems haunting them you know like financial debt relationship drama and other high stresses so heroin you know would make these problems go away for a while and you know this relief was appreciated you know anybody else didn't really care for it so <laughs> instead of heroin try my prosperity video you know to clear your bad karma and curses and vows you know concerning prosperity but really in general really focus on grounding keeping your roots and your foot chakra open your root and foot chakra that's very important if you're not properly grounded you will not be in harmony with earth life and having an income and paying rent is part of earth life at this time <laughs> and then they called divorce or loss of a loved one and um, probably again you know um, stress and the avoiding's behavior trying to get away from these bad feelings and of course if you listen to buddhist philosophy yeah you know disease and death uh, cannot be avoided right so another uh, factor you know for addiction is of course long-term tobacco habit so you know from a shamanic point of view tobacco use uh, grounds you instantly and gives you you know quick harsh high and it affects you know change in your consciousness and so a lot of shaman type people you know like it for that reason and i mean it's also a social lubricant <laughs> you get to meet other smokers you know just ask for a light and take it from them you know so it's part of a lifestyle mm -hmm. for many and it's getting more and more difficult of course and of course it's not good for your health but um, you know quitting smoking is easy i've done it hundreds of times uh, mostly of course only for a few days so <laughs> to quit smoking takes a lot of willpower and one has to come to a point of no return i mean just to have the proper determination you know to go for the long haul you know fight it like for half a year you know resisting this temptation you really have to hit rock bottom there and another reason um, for you know addiction was quoted is a tense home environment well here we have it again uh, stress in general i mean whether it's job in you know, the job you know it's avoiding behavior you're not just at home it's avoiding behavior take the edge off and another um, point was quoted lack of parental attachment in childhood which i thought was very interesting you know there must be hinting <laughs> on not enough love you know and actually nursing from the parents that leads to um, oral fixation you know whether it's sucking on your thumb or on a cigarette or on a beer you know to fill that void inside you know the absence of love you know this even with stuff like candy like a candy bar or even a ford mustang with that supersonic exhaust pipe uh, sexual addiction was not mentioned and i mean if you ask me uh, what was alcohol you know for the native americans and heroin you know for the europeans is p-o-r-n for men you know, at the moment of course this is type of censorship we are having i'm not going to get into the subject you know maybe later on i do a special you know more restricted video uh, where we can talk freely about this now in my opinion you know sensitivity i think is one of the great factors you know that affect addictive behavior um, you know sensitivity the sensitivity uh, one feels the pain of the world the most and the deepest you know in in their empathy you know the some you know the sensitive person you know picks up on the dark emotions you know of their fellow beings and suffer more 
than a dull person, you know, under similar negative circumstances. On the other side, a person can experience, you know, a sensitive person can experience a higher and more subtle realms of perception and bliss in an uplifting environment, like in nature, you know, or in a beautiful concert, not so much in a heavy metal concert, <laughs> you know. Uh, an empath, you know, suffers the emotion um, of others, you know, till they learn how to control their energy body, you know, open their chakras at will, you know, and put up an effective force field, you know, that uh, deflects on the negativity. Now, once you have achieved that, you know, being empath is a great opulence. You know, you can enjoy, you know, the sunset, you can enjoy the subtleties of, um, you know, harmonious, um, you know, vibrations. Mm. Another one that wasn't mentioned at all is, I mean, low impulse control. You know, many times due to damage to the frontal cortex, you know, the decision-making aspect of your brain. So, I mean, you know, let's face it, some people just have an IQ of room temperature in Fahrenheit. And, you know, that leads to an emotional control of a chimpanzee, you know, which sooner or later, you know, makes them a criminal. So, in many times, you know, their mummy had to take the edge off you know, during the pregnancy, you know, or her cell phone baked a few too many brain cells of the developing embryo. And, you know, so that's, you know, probably more difficult to reverse. <clears throat> and, uh, but probably a lot of a big factor, you know, um, the penitentiaries, you know, to a great amount are actually, you know, um, for the mentally challenged people. And then it's, of course, um, you know, fun programming, I call it, <laughs> you know, the advertising industry, <laughs> you know. So um, that leads us, you know, to the search of pleasure and hedonism, you know, following the stereotypes, you know, of our favorite movies, <laughs> like, you know, two bimbo cocos that hold you up, you know, one is holding the cigar, the other is holding the drink. You know, the epitome of financial success. Um, you know, or, uh, you know, you're watching these ads, you know, of these cool, beautiful people having lots of fun on the beach, you know, due to Conan beer. Yeah? In reality, um, you know, you may be laying drunk in a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, trying to have a good time, you know. Also, Conan beer had a lot to do with your bulging waistline and the fact that you have to use uh, public transportation to get to your dates because of these um, pesky DUIs. Uh, you know, so a lot of our addictive behavior, you know, is this condition, you know, it's the cool thing, you know, it's cool to smoke cigarette, to be the bad boy, to be the rebel. You know, and um, how to do drugs. It's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another aspect I see is, you know, milking the highlights of your life again and again. And maybe because, you know, you got late when you were drunk, you know, or you had this beautiful cosmic experience, you know, when you're high. And you, of course, you want to do it again and again. You know, and so you think these uh, crutches, you know, helped you to get there. And of course, there was this experiment, you know, where monkeys were implanted with an electrode stimulating the pleasure centers. And <laughs> they would get something like an orgasm every time they hit the key. And yeah, I think in the first minute they hit that key, you know, 30 times or 60 times, pretty much like Morse codes, you know, I mean, I even, I think humans maybe even, you know, there is absolutely no control, you know, when it gets to these kinds of pleasures, you know, that of course gets burnt into the amygdala. Um, and of course now um, there is also, you know, this principle of escapism, you know, whether it's a stressful life, <laughs> you know. Or you have a boring, mediocre life, you know, and the booze, you know, or the drugs 
bring a glow back into your life. You know, you do something crazy when you're done, or you say something. You guys had fun. You know, um, so, kind of a, maybe even a mother's little helper, or the wine cooler, you know, she always kept in the garage. And I mean, I really recommend listening to the recording of John Barleycon, you know, written by the famous American author and Jack London. So, I mean, his insight into alcoholism is <laughs> as profound as they are the unique. I mean, it's definitely worth the time. And so, I mean, really, finally, there's also this part of addictive behavior that is trauma avoidance. I mean, just getting away, you know, from the pain, you know, when your heart is broken. I mean, you know, by making love to half a gallon of ice cream, you know. Or, you know, blurring out that constant vision of the horror, you know, and you got stuck on this vision, you know, whether it's sexual abuse or combat in war. I mean, your high-speed camera is rolling there, it's imprinted in your mind. And whenever, you know, you close your eyes, you know, it's there, so you're trying to blur this vision with a shot glass. And, um, of course, um, that is very self-destructive. So, uh, my working theory is basically, you know, the bigger your pain body, you know, according to Edgar Tolle, you know, the higher the tendency towards avoidance addictive behavior. Now, let's go a little bit more to the woo-woo side of things, you know, this is, what is my specialty, <laughs> you know, go where nobody has gone before. So, I mean, other possible reasons, you know, are first of all, curses. And curses, so, are the root cause of the misery, you know, that leads to self-medication. You know, so basically under the principle, whatever helps you through the night. Another big thing is that's really off the radar of most is past life trauma. Big part of your pain that you're trying to cover up. I mean, in so many life past life regression, I, you know, encounter suicides, you know, that are still hanging around as a ghost, you know, out of love, out of desperation, out of poverty, you know, um, really bumped out people and, you know, they give you these uh, negative uh, thought forms and emotions. And it has nothing to do with this lifetime in Germany. And then, of course, there are past life habits, <laughs> like alcoholism, you know, or drug and sex addiction. And, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, are burnt into, you know, maybe some of your parallel timelines do this, or your past lifetimes. Mm -hmm. This has an effect on you that has to be, you know, considered and worked on. Another one is karma. Right? Um, you know, sometimes we dish it out and then we have to also take it, right? So when uh, maybe we were a bartender taking advantage of drunks, or we were a drug dealer, or we were a pusher, right? Or we had part in the opium wars, you know? Or, just for a completely different reason, maybe you were a slave trader and there are 254 angry ghosts that want you and your loved ones to suffer till you die. And they do anything, you know, to make you suffer, get you addicted, you know, get you raped, get you fired, you know, block your love. So it could be just that. Important to check up on this. <clears throat> so, and another big thing, and I find this so many times, a discarnate consciousness, I mean ghosts be frank, is using you as an amusement park and inspire you, you know, to their favorite addiction. <laughs> so that could even be just a granddad, you know, smoking cigars through you, you know, or a junkie ghost, you know, that OD, you know, and died in the hospital that you picked up there, you know, and suddenly you're craving certain pills. Or, and I'm not making this up, I mean, just last week, had a client that had picked up a ghost at the hospital. You know, it was of a man that committed suicide by overdosing. And he gave her suicidal thoughts, you know, that she experienced recently. And, uh, you know, a very important factor, you know. And uh, folks, 
you know, let me break it to you. Thoughts are not you. They are more like personalized commercials that you, you know, attract on the internet nowadays. They are not you. They respond to your habits and level of vibration. You know? So when you look up a lot about cosmetics, you know, after some time, you know, when all the different, you know, channels start pitching, pitching your cosmetics. So, you know, you attract thoughts by your habits. And that is why I preach smiling. Smiling brings you into the higher mind, you know, and then one attracts higher vibrational thoughts. So, but, uh, what is my solution to addiction? Well, I mean, don't do it anymore. That's the real simple one. <coughs> but <coughs> my, that would be just covering over with willpower. You know, it uh, would not get to the root cause. And you want to come to the root cause. Not constant struggle. Mm -hmm. So my approach is twofold. You know, first, clearing the root cause that is being self-medicated. You know, so that is your pain body. You know, this could be your birth trauma, your abandonment issue, you know, what, whatever happened to you. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you, you know, um, clear, you know, ghosts like addicts, you know, or traumatized aspects, you know, whose pain has driven you to self-medication. Mm -hmm. Then also, check for curses, you know, to be always unhappy and stuff like this and self-destructive. Yeah, and also a big factor is like vows, like taking up the suffering of the world. You know, we do uh, like pious little monks and nuns and oh, let's like be like Jesus and help them, you know. And uh, that of course takes the lessons away from others and makes you useless as an instrument of source. And then there's of course also this aspect of guilt. You know, and that we deserve suffering because we did bad things, you know, in this lifetime or in other lifetimes. I've come across this many, many times. You know, you screw up as a general and thousands of people die or as a king and your people starve or get enslaved. <laughs> you know, this, or you couldn't save, you know, your loved ones or you threw them under the bus. And, you know, there's always reason you know, for us to voluntarily suffer to make up for it. And um, then, of course, you know, the second, you know, uh, means, you know, clear all the pain and suffering. The second aspect is, you know, to show a way to love and light that makes it, you know, available to you as instant as a cigarette, you know. So, for instance, you're feeling down, you know, you want to do your favorite destruction. Well, just smile, breathe deeply, ground, connect to the heavens, put the love into your heart, you know, hook up to source in your heart. Yeah. You know, and you just feel fine. And this can be done in under five minutes if you train for it. You know, it can be done very fast. So, then we ask now that everything that happens in and from this guided meditation here and this knowledge here is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the mouse bundle. Now close your eyes. And now we ask Absolute Source to surround us and our parallel selves on parallel timelines. This is powerful aura of love and light that can only be penetrated by love and light and that transmutes any darkness in us or around us or deflects it. And then please maintain this. Amen. 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 Make sure you say Amen. And we also ask that please to clear any damage and trauma and karma that was put into us and our ancestors in this and past incarnations as well as in parallel timelines that caused us to cope with addictive behavior. And also please liberate any bound or stuck soul fragments that got stuck due to addictive behavior. 
And also, we want to take our power and energy back that was wrongfully taken from us due to addictive behavior. And we also want to be connected to our inner knowing and opulence instead of just looking outside of us for release from our addictive behavior. And please connect us to the aspects of us that are whole and full of love and fully integrated with Source so that we can rest in our hearts and be in the moment. And in case we and our ancestors negatively affected other living beings with addictive behavior and were not in alignment with the divine law, we ask for forgiveness and their liberation with the same grace and mercy that is also extended to me and my ancestors and parallel timelines. We ask Source and the beings of love and light to protect us from all the service to self beings, from their scrutiny, manipulation, attacks and revenge in this and parallel timelines, especially the beings that cultivate addictive behavior in us. Um, just imagine the earth like the center of the earth being like three yards below you and just pull her love from there imagine that in the center of the earth there is an earth star that connects you into your root chakra as well as into your feet and imagine you're pulling this love from this star into your heart on the inhale and on the exhale you send your love from your heart to this star in the middle of the earth. It's of course an astral star. So work through your feet and through your root chakra and we ask our spirit guides to please clear any parasites, distortion, darkness and blocks from our root and foot chakras now. Amen. Just go back and forth, you know, with your chi, you know, you're scrubbing your root chakra and your foot chakras back and forth. Deep in and out. Mm -hmm. And now um, focus on pulling in a smudge love from the earth center into your heart. Have your tongue at the palate and then push it out the top of the head you know, two yards up into the heavens, I call it, into your higher chakras that connect you with your you know, higher dimensional aspects. Mm -hmm. And we ask that any resistances in our crown chakra, in our shushumna, this means spinal cord, please be cleared. Mm -hmm. Deep breathing and smile like an Indian. Mm -hmm. And now start imagining that you're pulling love from the heavens. This is, you know, two yards above your head as well as from the earth simultaneously into your heart. Just imagine, you know, pulling it in as if you're inhaling smoke into your heart. Smile. And on your exhale, just you know, let the energy rest in that area. And then really just focus on the inhale, on a strong inhale. The exhale, just let it fall naturally. You know, just let the cage, the chest cage, just you know, fall naturally back. Like that. Mm -hmm. And you will probably start to feel the clearing of the heart chakra. We ask our high self and the spirit guides to please clear any darkness and resistances in our heart chakra, whether it's from others or ourselves. Please find our move on clear and continue to finish. Amen. Hmm. And now call for your high self that's you on a higher plane, either in a male or female aspect, whatever they prefer. It sometimes is also androgynous 
and sometimes it's not even humanoid. You know, it's just the radiance. Mm -hmm. And just call in your high self, you know, to be in front of you now. Amen. And smile. Uh, yeah, you probably feel an expansion. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, pull in a lot of love from heaven and earth into your heart. And on the exhale, send it to your high self. And, you know, and just keep sending love with every exhale and see how does your high self react. Does it squirm or does it appreciate the love? And if it squirms, <coughs> it's not your high self. You know, there is something wrong. You know, we ask this one to leave and we ask that your real high self be coming in front of you now. Amen. But now, for the coming, you know, guided meditation, just send love to the high self on the exhale and on the inhale, inhale the love from the high self's heart into your heart. So you pull the love from the high self into your heart and on the exhale you send to your love to the love to the heart of the high self. Pull them the love back in and then send it back. It's like a big medicine ball of love going back and forth, heart to heart. Get it? And smile like an idiot, so it's love, you know, otherwise it's rape. So, <coughs> and, you know, keep, you know, uh, running love with your high self, that will keep you off the mental plane and, um, you know, make you a much more accurate channel. Of course, this is not really that important, you know, what we're channeling here well, is just to give an idea and an insight. And so, um, let's just get a rating system going, um, you know, there is the yes and the no, and the yes would be an upflow of energy, like that, just like a, you know, high, and a no would be a downflow of energy from the heart that would feel like that. A flow towards the feet, kind of a downer. Right? And, um, and most of you that did my meditation already know this method. Let's just add a new method. And this is, uh, it, you know, uh, we have a scale from 1 to 10. So a 10 is as bad as it can get, and a 0 is completely harmless for the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just asked your know, high self to pop a number in our head, you know. And I mean, again, you're not buying, you know, a house you know, or a boat here right now. So let's just do a test mm -hmm. and you ask, you know, on how harmful on a scale of 1 to 10 is it if you drink half a bottle of vodka every day. Yeah, pretty much a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> how about um, one fast food meal per day in 10 years? And if you're not getting any impressions at all, you might just want to use a pendulum during the guided meditation. Yeah, it will be actually very easy to quantify, I mean very accurately. And if you do not know how to use a pendulum, just search my pendulum, my channel, you know, for a pendulum. So, uh, let's just, you know, go through, you know, a long laundry list. <laughs> And, um, you know, and just, um, you know, get an overview, right? You can later on maybe, uh, you know, go more detailed, you know, maybe even take notes, but just let's, for this time, let's just get an overview. So keep on smiling and running high, uh, love, you know, with your high self. So, is your um, addiction, your main addiction, due to low impulse control? You know, is it a yes or no? And if it's a yes, you know, how bad is it on a scale from 1 to 10? And is this impulse control or low impulse control due to brain damage? 
And how bad? From 1 to 10. Is this lack of impulse control due to low willpower? And yeah, if yes, you know how much? From 1 to 10. And how much of your reason for addiction is due to parental imprinting? From 1 to 10. And how much of your addiction is what I call fun programming? You know, where you will be promised you will be happy if you drink more or eat more. And very similar, and how much of your addictive behavior is induced, you know, by the glamour of advertisement? And how much is your addiction in the search of pleasure and hedonism? You know, where you think that hedonism or pleasure is the goal of life. 1 to 10. And how much, you know, is your addiction kind of a benediction? <laughs> when you thought that hedonism was the peak of your life experience and you asked for it. You know, this could be like in search of the eternal birth, or when you were just plain out starving and you were just, you know, praying, you know, for Schlaraffen, you know, where you could eat unlimited. And so many lifetimes, you know, we were just starving and, and, you know, and now you have this lifetime where you can just go to the supermarket and get food items, you know, from all parts of the world and you can just gouge yourself, you know, until you 400, 500 pounds. It's not, a, you know, a rarity anymore. Um, so this might just be the fulfillment of past lifetimes, you know, where you suffer. So how much? Is it a benediction for you in this lifetime, from 1 to 10? In how much is your addictive behavior like milking the highlights of your life again and again and again and then again? You know, you get my drift, like when you had sex with your gym teacher in the locker room, you know, or when you were drunk and had a great time with your friends. From 1 to 10. Now how much of your addiction is due to escapism? From 1 to 10. And very similarly, in how much of your addictive behavior is trauma avoidance from 1 to 10? And is this mostly from this life, the trauma? Yes or no? Or is the trauma mostly from past lifetimes? Now, how much of your addiction is actually coming from a shaman aspect of you that is in search of enlightenment? <laughs> from 1 to 10. And how much is coming from past life addicts that are still following you around from 1 to 10.
And how much is your addiction like a lesson that you volunteer for before you incarnate? That's a life lesson. From one to ten. In how much is now due to vows? You know, for instance, there is this vows that many of us did um, that we um, suffer, you know, for Jesus or the sins of the world. You know, we did this as pious little monks and nuns. So, how much is your suffering due to vows you did? From one to ten. In how much is your suffering due to atone for past wrongdoings, you know, out of guilt? From 1 to 10. And how much is your suffering due to curses and spells, you know, that others put on you, you know, eternal suffering and of course addiction is like a big time suffering, you know, very big, 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 big suffering. Mm -hmm. From one to ten. In how much of your suffering is due to ancestor curses, you know, where you didn't have anything to do with it, but your ancestors did. And, you know, as we get into ancestors, let's widen this, you know, perception, you know, racial curses and programming, you know? So how much of your addiction is due to racial curses and programming, right? Like, let's sell drugs in the projects and keep them down, you know, or with the opium wars, you know, in China, you know? Um, so, you know, how much, you know, um, you know, are you affected by these type of racial curses on a scale from 1 to 10? Mm -hmm. And how much of your, you know, addiction is due to karma? You know, this could, you could have been a bartender, you know, that was <laughs> taken advantage of drunks, or a drug dealer, or even worse, like a pusher and uh, you may be all part of the opium wars you know, or the heroin trade you know, or coke trade you know whatever that was mm. so on a scale from 1 to 10 how much is your addiction due to karma And I have to say, you know, that I've been told by high selves, you know, of clients that many alcoholics are suffering a huge amount in a short time. You know, burning of karma, you know, of as mass murderers and other heinous pastimes in past lifetimes. You know, so um, blame those. So if you're suffering, you know, like anything from alcoholism, you know, chances are that you, you know, atoning, you know, for many lifetimes, you know, where you hurt other people. You know, and now you're just atoning, you know, through one lifetime of suffering the pain of ten or hundred lifetimes. Yep. Now, um, there are, of course, um, other things, no, more mystical, more down the deep end, like portals, courts, and sabotage. So, um, you know, there is a psychic connection uh, to people that we are imprinted in. These are courts. So, uh, courts, like to addicts, like your father or ex-boyfriend, you know, affecting you with the addictive behavior. And is it on a scale from one to ten? And are there implants to control and sabotage you, you know, bringing you to addictive behavior, yes or no? And do you actually have a multidimensional addiction implants, yes or no?
are there actually portals through which dark energies or entities can affect you? Are they open, affecting you, um, bringing you to addictive behavior on a scale from 1 to 10? Are you subject due to um, alien tech and research? That they just research you like a lab mice, you know, with addictive behavior and control. Are you affected like this in a scale from 1 to 10? Uh, is your addictive behavior, you know, part of Anunnaki manipulation, you know, keeping you down as a slave race, you know? So, um, how much is the dark side trying to keep you in bondage, you know, uh, through addictive behavior? From 1 to 10. Now we ask the Divine Ascension Teams of Source and uh, other Divine Beings of Love and Light that are authorized to do this. I call them Ascension Teams. Please bring out beings that are using addictive substances and other hidden technologies to harm or enslave humanity to the highest courts of spiritual justice now. Amen. Just make sure you agree to this. You know, so you don't get attacked later on. <laughs> Very important. Mm -hmm. And dear source of all, and the best heavenly physicians of love and light, please transmute any physical, astral, emotional, mental and spiritual trauma that is still with me to healing energy and upgrade us to our divine blueprint as much as possible now. Amen. Um, you agree here and smile and run love. Mm -hmm. When you run love, you have more potency. And smile. Asked in the name of the Absolute Source to clear any karmas, entanglement, cages, pain, cords, spells, contracts, glamour, bindings, promises, debts that we incurred because of our addictions. Amen. Also, please clear any artificial manipulation and predatory magic, technology, energies and entities that are using addiction coding to keep us in low vibration. Amen. I also choose to disengage aspects of my reptilian DNA through which I can be manipulated against the desire of my high self. Also, with your grace and mercy source, please clear anything that has not been mentioned but should be removed at this time. Um, and smile and run love with your high self. Breathe deeply. And let this settle in. Just keep on running love. And you want to hear the air flowing through your nostril. That's how deep you want to breathe. Okay, let's keep on continuing. Mm -hmm. We're going more the deep end. Mm -hmm. So let's ask how many parasitic spirits, it means not humans, not ghost of humans, are maintaining addictive behavior with you. Let's just see what number pops into your mind. Mm -hmm. And so for how many are you an amusement park, you know? for the ghosts of junkies, sexual addicts, you know, tweakers, potheads, shamans, and pill poppers, you know, and line snorters. <laughs> so how many, you know, ghosts are riding you for, for these purposes?
in how many of them are expansions of your own soul? And how many of them are hitchhikers? Means they're not part of your own soul. You may have picked them up, you know, on the bar, you know, or behind the dumpster of the Greyhound um, bus terminal, you know, uh, or when you were in a hospital. So this would be hitchhikers. So how many hitchhikers do you have? Hmm? He now asked how many hostile beings are maintaining addictive behavior with you, you know, to get to you. And some hostile beings or spirits, you know, have been pressed into service to you know, part of black magic, you know, to get the spirits to do your dark biddings. And, and of course that backfires now on them. <laughs> so just ask, you know, how many beings have been sent, you know, like slaves. And how many are volunteering to do so, means not forced. Now we asked for the presence of expert ascension teams that act for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. And smile and send love. And please bring any spirits or ghosts that are still trapped on the astral plane you know, through addictive behavior or causing addictive behavior um, to the Arcturian love feeling and ascension temples. And please reunite them there with lost loved ones that are still stuck on the astral plane, like lost baby spirits, sweethearts, etc. Amen. And please show them the higher as well as the hidden aspects of the incarnation. What was karma, what was volunteered for, to learn as a lesson, and also what was sabotaged by the dark side. Amen. Also clear any misunderstandings. So clear the deep abandonment pain, you know, going all the way back to the perceived separation of souls. Amen. And then help them with forgiveness. And once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, we asked Absolute Source to please clear any um, karma and other entanglements that still bind them, like vows, contracts, promises, curses, candle magic, black magic, and forms of bindings, bombs, booby traps, claws, hooks, cords, chains, and everything else that was not mentioned but needs to leave our space at this time. Um, And then we ask their ancestors that made it into the real heavens, into the higher dimensions, to please come down and escort them home. Amen, amen, amen. Hmm. And now we ask those aspects of our soul that can return to us now, that left or got split off, to return to us. I am a sovereign divine eternal being that is residing in a human body at this time, and I command in the name of the Absolute Source to liberate, return any stolen, captured parts of my soul, my energy and my mind to me now after purification and do it in the most auspicious way. Um.
And now I will count to three and you will be completely grounded and back in vacant day consciousness. Or if you went to sleep, if you want to go to sleep, to just continue sleeping nice and deeply and you will have very uplifting dreams for you that help you to integrate and be happy again and get guidance. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. And hello back now. Um, I hope you feel lighter now. Uh, don't drive. You're very spaced out, most likely. Just be introverted. Um, so I hope you got a good overview, you know, of what is holding you down. Um, you know, you probably should do these, uh, this meditation, you know, several times, you know, and see how it affects, you know, your craving. So they ultimately fall away naturally. And some of the ghost stuff and other stuff is more complicated for many of you. And I advise to take a session with me. You know, if you respond well and, and do this guided meditation, you're pretty much guaranteed a really good session with me. You know, then you have the talent. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you drink a lot of water. Don't drive now for half an hour, you know, until you're completely grounded. And um, if you have any questions or comment, you know, just um, write them down below. Um, you know, I read all the comments and I answer any intelligent and sincere questions. Of course, you know, further my course, give me a thumbs up, you know, and recommend me to your friends. I love you. Namaste.